So this was inspired, at least uh, from my perspective, for the talk tonight by a situation I observed recently. I was out on one of my walks and waiting at a crosswalk to cross, and there was a woman parked in the red zone with a no parking sign, like just, you know, if she looked right out her windshield to the right there, there was the no parking sign. And a police officer came around the corner and saw her parked there and pulled up. And I thought, oh dear, okay. And he just motioned to her that she had to move on, that it was time to move on. And from what I could tell, it looked like she was going to object or maybe, you know, try to give an excuse. I'm guessing that I, I was trying to figure out, you know, the eye expression, because nowadays, you know, we, we have our faces covered, so you really, you're just guessing what the person is thinking by their expression in their eyes. But that's what I read into it. And then something shifted, and then she just kind of nodded, like, a gesture of understanding and appreciation that he was just letting her move on. I think we all know that that situation could have gone differently, right? If she had decided to argue or he didn't even have to just stop and ask her to move on. Could have been a much more unpleasant interaction and have had more negative consequences for the woman. Well, as I watched that and I continued on my walk, I thought about the analogy of um, what happens when we ignore the signs that uh, maybe we shouldn't be parking in certain areas in our life when it's time to move on in life. Because you know, in Science of Mind, we re will remind you over and over again that God's nature is everywhere present, that we are imbued with God's nature. We're all expressions of this life of God. We have the opportunity to call forth goodness and experience goodness in every moment, no matter what is going on here on the earth plane. If we're not experiencing goodness, when we're experiencing any form of suffering or discomfort, it's coming from a false perception that we're separate from God, separate from good. So any negative condition in our lives or in the world can be healed as we do our work in consciousness to awaken to that God nature that's within us. So the unpleasantness, the pain, or the suffering we experience is simply a signal. You know, it's like that no parking sign that we need to move on from some false belief, from some error thinking, some way that we're seeing ourselves or others as limited, as not enough, there isn't enough, all of those false beliefs that prevent us from experiencing that nature of God that's right there at the center of our being. So, you know, going back to this analogy of the woman in the no parking zone, you know, the signs, the, the feelings of discomfort, the diseases that we experience, this sense of discord, these are all signs, instead of it saying no parking, saying, out of alignment with the truth. Error thinking, okay? The police, to me, uh, I think could be compared to when the universe gives us different signs along the way that's, you know, this isn't serving us. The beliefs, the thought patterns that we're engaged in are not reflecting the truth of God's presence in us, and they're not allowing us to experience goodness. Now, it could be just simply in a slight form of discomfort, anxiety, but when we ignore the signs, have you noticed that when we ignore something that's gnawing at us to let us know, you know, this isn't a good place to hang out in consciousness, it's not creating a lot of good in your life, it just keeps building and building, and if we ignore it too long, it just seems like the universe has to hit us with a two by four for us to finally wake up and go, whoa, why didn't I you know, pay attention to how I was holding on to those 
feelings of anger or whatever, and now you know I'm faced with this situation. The good news about it is no matter where we are along the way, if we ignored the signs or whatever, think of it as if we ignored the no parking sign and we got the ticket, the universe provides us with a means to pay the ticket if we're willing to and then move on. But we have to pay attention and we have to be willing to let go of the false beliefs and move forward. So, you know, there are any number of error, thought patterns, false beliefs that I think we can stay stuck in. But I just thought we'd look at maybe three that come up quite often that I find in my life that I face that I need to you know, look at and pay attention to. And uh, certainly when I'm uh, in counseling sessions with clients. And so one is that zone of woundedness and self-pity. Let me put it this way. It's OK and it's natural for us to feel pain, to feel momentarily hurt, upset, disappointed when we feel that others have treated us unkindly, when something, when we feel maybe life has treated us unkindly. I think that the, the pain we initially feel helps us to recognize the disparity between what's happening right now and the greater potential. So, you know, if someone has treated us badly, unkindly, we feel the gap between that and the potential for us all to always treat each other with love and kindness. So we feel the pain, but it's just there to help us to learn from the experience and move on. Rehashing how upset we are, how hurt we are, how unfortunate this situation is, how frustrated we are. You know, it just keeps us feeling wounded. Rehashing the experience in our minds just causes us to relive it over and over and over again, even though it's not what's happening right now. Instead, if we look at how we're feeling and ask, what constructive step can I take to make good of this situation? Okay, so yes, I felt hurt. Yes, I you know, felt upset. What constructive step can I take to move forward? You know, maybe, just maybe, I'm misinterpreting things. I'm putting a spin on something someone said that isn't even what they meant. Maybe this is my opportunity to speak up so there can be more understanding. Maybe I could use some coaching on how to resolve this problem. The ideas start coming forward as to what we might do to move forward, to move on in a positive direction. The minute we look at how to deal with the issue constructively, we're turning our awareness to God's potential for some good to be revealed versus staying parked in that space of, you know, how big a problem this is, how hurt we are, how wounded we are. The other uh, parking space that I think we get into that we might want to check on and move out of as soon as we can is the land or the space of resentment. You know, spending time in resentment of others or the way things are is incredibly debilitating as far as our energy goes. And we often spend more time resenting something than uh, actually doing something constructive about it. You know, the way things are in the world is just the way things are in the world right now. It's not necessarily the way they need to be forever. And so it's understandable that we may 
experience that sense of resentment for a moment when we see examples of injustice or unkindness in the world or whatever. But again, our job is to remember that God's potential for good is greater than the situation and ask what good can be made out of this. You know, every form of human injustment or injustice or every human ailment that has been remedied has been accomplished from working toward a greater potential versus parking in resentment land, right? So again, just like, you know, when we're in that place of feeling wounded or whatever, when we find ourselves really in this place of resentment is to stop and say, okay, this is the way things are. What is it that I would like to see? What quality of God would I like to see more fully expressed here? And then, you know, what constructive steps can I take to bring forth that greater good? And the third parking, uh, no parking zone that we end up parking in is the space of feeling like a failure. We're all subject to failing humanly in our goal to achieve, you know, to live up to certain idea, ideals, to, um, you know, have certain goals. It's part of our evolution. You know, we are awakening to that God nature within, and until we're fully enlightened beings, there are gonna be times that we're gonna mess up, and there are just some times that on the human plane, we're learning something new, and we're not really skillful at it in the beginning. So we're probably going to encounter failure multiple times in our lives. I know I certainly have, but all too often, we associate failing at something with being a failure. And the two are very different. Because when we tell ourselves, you know, I am a failure, that becomes our identity. And we have to remember God's nature in us is what is most true and most real about us. God is never a failure. And unconditional love the love of God never looks at anything or anyone in creation as a failure. You know, every human failure is, again, something to learn and grow from. So in all of these things that we looked at, to get beyond woundedness, self-pity, resentment, a sense of failure, of being a failure, all of these involve some element of forgiveness to move out of that um, space and consciousness. You know, and forgiveness is pretty much what I had described before. It's, I, I know a lot of people think of forgiveness as just saying that whatever has happened or whatever is that, you know, has caused us any pain is okay. We're just going to say it's okay. And it's not about that at all. It's about recognizing that, okay, this is what's before us. This is what's happened. And to realize that anything negative, whether it's something that some wrongdoing on our part, some wrongdoing on other people's part, it's all happening as a result of us not being fully awakened beings as yet, that we're still in a process of evolution, of awakening, to our divine nature. So we can understand that that's what's happening. And to forgive ourselves or to feel, forgive others, again, isn't about saying it's OK, but it's just saying that's happened. That's where things are. Now, what's the most constructive thing I can do to move forward, as I was talking about earlier? To sit and condemn ourselves or others, or situations in the world over and over again leaves us feeling stuck, stuck in that space where the universe is trying to tell us no parking 
move on. And so when we ask ourselves, what is the most constructive thing I can do? And there can be any number of solutions. You know, it may mean that we, we have to say certain people can't be in my life right now because the interactions aren't healthy. They're not in a place in consciousness for us to have a healthy relationship. Fine, I bless them, I move on. But it's about saying, what do I do that is constructive, that blesses me, that does no harm to others to move forward? Because the minute we ask ourselves that question again, we are turning our awareness away from the issue, away from the problem, to God's potential that's greater and that's there to be revealed. That's when we move on from being parked in the woe is me or that's so awful or I'm so awful spaces to discover the greater goodness of God that's ever present for us to experience and to express. So let's take this moment to just turn inward. And I invite you to bring your awareness to any way that you feel stuck in any sense of woundedness or resentment or failure, whatever comes up. And allow yourself to recognize that the discomfort you're experiencing is just from that feeling, of the disparity between what is and the greater good that could be. And so as you think about the greater good that could be, bring your attention to the aspect of God's nature that you feel could be more fully revealed here in this situation. There's this part of you that can imagine the situation resolved, healed. And realize that this vibration that you can feel as the greater potential lies within you, lies in all things. And as you focus on it versus the issue, it magnifies and reveals the ways that that greater good can be revealed. And so I invite you to take this moment to commit to letting that potential within you guide you. Let it guide you to taking constructive steps that allow you to make good of this issue. And know that as you continue to do that, as you continue to focus on that possibility of the greater good to be revealed. And you are moved forward, you are inspired to take actions toward that greater good. You're released from this place where you felt stuck and moved into new experiences and expressions of God's goodness. And so from this place in consciousness, let's join together to know the truth about many of the human conditions that we can struggle with. But let's know that that one life, that one power, that one vibration of God's love and light and creativity is ever present throughout creation. It is the life of all. It is my life. It is the life of each and every person gathered for the service, every being everywhere. And so let us know that where there may be any struggle or discomfort around change in the world, that the truth is that God's nature that lies at the center of everything is changeless. That yes, indeed, things change. Things come and go in the world. But as we turn to that nature of the divine, it reveals new ways for us to experience its goodness. And as we know this truth, those who need to know it are awakened. Let us know also that this vibration of God is perfect health, wholeness, well-being in every way it can be experienced. 
And as we know that God is present as health, as wholeness, as a healing power throughout the universe, we are aligning with that vibration for it to reveal the pathways for healing of human ailments, be they physical ailments like the pandemic, be they any kind of emotional, mental ailments, whatever, that God's goodness is always there and is revealing itself as wholeness and well-being. Let us know that this creative power of God is operating through each one of us, every being everywhere, that it is a presence that seeks to give and share of its nature uniquely through each of us. So each of us are guided to those perfect ways to share the gifts that we have to share as unique incarnations of the divine, where we are valued and appreciated. Let us absolutely remember that that presence of the divine is infinite, and so any experience of lack is just due to our inability in the moment to remember they are, we are one with the infinite source. And so as we know that together now, we support the healing of any experiences of lack for greater abundance to be revealed, a greater capacity to give and receive love for all needs to be met, financial, emotional, in every way. And we remember right now that that core nature of God is love and that love lives in each of us. And as we know that that love is unconditional, we open to greater self-love and love for others. And we know that the impulse of love is for greater good. And so let us honor that impulse by setting our intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, let us absolutely know that God is at the center. We are feeling God's will for greater revelation of its nature in our lives, in the lives of our loved ones, and in the world. And so as we know that God is in these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and so it's with a heart filled with gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.